friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. Um, I just recorded this video and I realized my microphone wasn't on, but it's okay. I had fun chatting about this video, so I'm excited to talk about it again with you. This is the Celebrity and Beauty Influencer Brand Tag. I'm excited to chat about these questions with you. This was created by Smokey Glow and Tara Brooke. I will, of course, have their videos down in the description box as well. Please go check them out if you haven't already. Basically, these are just questions centered around celebrity and influencer beauty brands. There are so many of them. I thought this was a really fun tag. I really enjoyed watching their videos. I think this would be a really fun tag to see get pretty widespread. I would love to hear a lot of people's answers. I think that there's a lot of people that could offer really good insight on these questions and topics. Overall, I just think this is fun. You guys know I love a good tag video. I love sitting down and chatting with you about makeup and brands and trends and all that good stuff. Before we hop into the questions themselves, I did film this look, of course. I film every look that you see on camera. This should already be up on my IGTV by the time this video goes up. I actually quite love this look. I think it came out really cute. This is a Chrisma brand wig. Check my FAQ in the description box if you need spelling. And this is a CC beanie. Anyways, I don't want to babble too much in this intro, so let's just hop in and answer the questions. Question number one, what are your general thoughts on celebrity and influencer beauty brands? Overall, it can definitely feel a bit oversaturated, a bit cash grabby at times, if you will. But at the end of the day, no one's forcing you to buy anything. And it is kind of nice having options because even six, seven years ago when I was first really getting into makeup, there weren't as many options, especially with how YouTube is now. You can find a review on literally anything. So it's really helpful. There's a lot of options, lots of information out there. So you can really kind of pick and choose and curate what's going to be perfect for you. So even though it can feel oversaturated, I don't completely mind because no one's forcing you to buy anything and just gives you more options, more things to work with. Question number two, kind of bouncing off of that first question, brand that gives off the most cash grab vibes. Um, I wrote down two things, and if you love these people, no hate against them. It's just, I feel a little cash grabby about their brands. Um, but the new JLo Beauty, I feel very cash grabby about. One, it's so expensive. It's so expensive. And two, she tries to claim that her skin looks the way it does because of her products. When in reality, she's filthy rich. She's getting professional help. She's getting facial. She's getting all these lavish treatments. It's not solely her products that are doing that. You know what I mean? I'm sure she's using her products. Her products might be great. Who knows? But I don't know. Feels a little cash grabby. <laughs> I also wrote down Millie Bobby Brown, and I love Millie Bobby Brown. I think she's the cutest little angel, but I feel like her brand does feel a little cash grabby. And it could just be because I'm not the perfect demographic for her brand, but it does feel a little like someone was like, hey, Millie, I made this brand. Do you want to slap your name on it and make some money off of it? And she's like, you know what? Might as well. I'm bored. <laughs> um, maybe it's a great brand. I've heard hit or miss things. Maybe the younger audience of hers is really enjoying it but I do get a little bit of a cash grabby vibe from that brand. Question number three, brand you own the most products from? I don't really own that many things from that many celebrity or influencer brands. I learned that recently when I was preparing for this video, um, but the ones that I do own the most things from are Fenty and Likely Makeup. Fenty, I own like a foundation, a lip gloss, a highlight. That might be it. I don't own too many things. I do wanna try more from Fenty. It's just a matter of doing it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I own some things from Fenty and then from Likely Makeup, I've owned quite a few pairs of lashes, like three or four pairs in my day. And I also have both of her blush palettes. I want more blush palettes to come out from her so bad. And I would not mind at all trying more of her lashes. I really like Anxious Angel. Those are such cute lashes. Question number four, brand you haven't tried, but still want to. I wrote down like five things for this. Um, first is going to be Rare Beauty. Her complexion products speak to my soul. Selena Gomez did something beautiful with those products. I've heard really good things about the complexion products. I really want to try them for myself. Maybe one day. I also wrote down Patrick Ta. That one likely won't happen because it's a bit out of my price range. I just don't know if I'll ever justify it, but his blushes. My goodness, his blushes look beautiful, mouth-watering, everything good in the world. M Cosmetics, I'm super intrigued by. I've been intrigued by M Cosmetics ever since like midway through 2020. That's Michelle Fawn's brand. Very intrigued by her brand, especially her little serum blushes. They're in like these ball components. Her new cushion foundation looks flawless. I wanna try her products so bad. I'm really hoping that'll happen this year. I think I wrote down six brands actually. <laughs> I also wrote down Vive, which is Jamie Genevieve's new brand. And as of right now, I don't like love the things that have come out. They're beautiful. They're just not completely up my alley, but I am keeping a close eye on her brand because it looks very aesthetically pleasing. 
very much intrigued to see what else comes out from her. I wrote down Halsey's brand about face. Obviously it's only for pre-order now. I don't know if anyone's even been talking about her products in person yet. Like I don't know if anyone has them, at least at the moment that I'm filming this. I haven't purchased anything yet. I'm gonna wait for reviews and see what people think, but if everything's going well, I might pick something up because I love Halsey and her brand looks really, really cool. I'm very impressed so far with just the way everything looks. And I also wrote down Samantha Ravindel's new brand, Auric. I'm very excited. I was just watching her video about it. I'm so proud of her. I'm so excited to see what she comes out with in the future. Right now I'm very excited about her like glowy product. You like can wear it by itself or mix it into things. It looks beautiful. I love highlighty products. I love dewy skin. I might pick that up one day, but again, it is a little higher of a price tag, so I'm gonna wait for reviews and see what people say about it, but I'm very intrigued. If you've tried anything from these brands, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what is and isn't any good. Question number five, brand you'd be more willing to try if its owner wasn't so problematic. I've been thinking about this question for like a week and I don't think you're gonna like my answer because my answer is I don't have an answer. I just feel like out of the brands with a problematic owner that I don't purchase from, there isn't really anything that I'm missing. There isn't anything that I'm drooling over and swooning over and wishing I could have it. I feel like I'm pretty content without them. I don't know, I really tried to think of something and I just couldn't think of anything. <laughs> Question number six, brand with the most controversial launch. So I wrote down two things, first being the Jeffree Star Orgy palette. I just thought it was weird, and especially considering his audience is mostly like children. <laughs> he has a very young demographic. Um, I just thought it was kind of wildly inappropriate, but maybe that's just me. I'm not huge into like sexual jokes and things like that. That's not really my vibe. I'm a very PG-13 kind of human, <laughs> but I don't know. Just considering what his audience for the most part is, I thought it was very weird. And of course the Jaclyn Cosmetics lipstick launch. That was crazy, huge debacle, shards of metal, fuzzies, hairs, melted, all kinds of craziness. That was a horrible first launch. I did hear that her highlights were a better launch and I do wish the best for her going forward. I don't know if I'm gonna run out and grab anything anytime soon, but I do wish her the best. I don't want anyone to fail and I just really hope she learns from her mistake with that. Question number seven, brand that wouldn't have seen the success it's had if it didn't have a famous face behind it. I wrote down Kylie Cosmetics and KKW Beauty. I do not think those brands would have been nearly as successful as they are without Kylie Jenner and Kim Kardashian being the face of them. Maybe they would have gained major popularity over time, but they would not have had at least that initial like boom of everybody loving them if it wasn't for them. I'm not big into those brands. I don't really care. I really don't have any interest in them. The owners or the brands, honestly. They're just not the kind of people I keep up to date with, but I know people really like them, but I definitely do not think they would have seen this amount of success without them being a part of it. And bouncing off of that brand that doesn't rely on its owner for success. I wrote down two things, first being Flower Beauty, that is Drew Barrymore's brand. I feel like Flower Beauty is doing just fine on its own and doesn't need Drew Barrymore's face plastered on everything to sell products. They're very accessible, very affordable. I think people enjoy her products without even knowing that Drew Barrymore is the owner. For the first like year I'd heard about Flower Beauty, I didn't even know Drew Barrymore was the owner. I only learned about that like a couple years ago. Like I'd already known about Flower Beauty before I knew about Drew Barrymore being a part of it. So yeah, I wrote down Flower Beauty and I also wrote down Huda Beauty. And even though Huda's name is in the name of the brand, I don't think a lot of people realize that Huda was just an influencer to start with. I've actually seen that a lot over the last week doing my research for this uh, tag. I think Huda's brand is just so Instagram focused and it took off because of Instagram, not so much because of her if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. I do not think that her brand would have seen the success it had had it not been for Instagram, but I don't think it had necessarily things to do with her face. Maybe she got a little bit of a jump start, but especially at this point, the amount of success she's having, I don't think it's because of her. It's just because of Instagram. <laughs> uh, question number nine, brand that surprisingly doesn't align with its owner's persona and aesthetic. Can you guess what I'm gonna say? It's the same thing everybody's been saying, but it's House Labs. Lady Gaga's brand is just very meh. It's not horrible. It doesn't look awful. It's not ugly, but it's not what we thought it was gonna be, was it? <laughs> Lady Gaga is such a cool, edgy, over-the-top, interesting human, and her brand is just none of those things. It's very meh, kind of vanilla. It's not that exciting. I expected a lot more. I was really excited when I initially heard that Lady Gaga was coming out with a brand and then for it to just be this, it just wasn't it. 
<laughs> Question number 10, brand that deserves more hype. I wrote down two things. First being Likely Makeup Again. I already raved about her at the beginning of the video, but I think Jordi is doing such a good job. Her channel's It's Likely Makeup. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but I just think Likely Makeup deserves more hype. I think she's doing a really good job. She's coming out with really cool, interesting, unique pairs of lashes. Her blush books are so innovative, and I just think she deserves more attention, 100%. I also wrote down Lunar Beauty. I think Manny MUA has done a really good job kind of figuring out what his aesthetic needs to be. His first palette wasn't the best, like the Life's a Drag palette was a little eh. I did buy it and I liked it at the time, but he's doing a lot better now. I think he's really kind of honed in on what he wants his brand to be. It's very beautiful, very aesthetically pleasing. I do want to try his blush palette at some point and maybe even a highlight. I'm excited to see his brand grow and I think it does deserve more hype than it currently has. I could really see his brand going places without his face needing to be like the premise of it, if that makes sense. I think he's doing a really good job with the theming. Question number 11, brand that doesn't live up to the hype. Um, first is gonna be House Labs. <laughs> I'm not gonna drone on too much again, but I just feel like House Labs really, really let us down. I know some people are really into it, but I just, I wanted more. Again, it's not a horrible looking brand. I haven't tried anything personally, so I can't speak on the quality, but I just wanted more. I wanted more excitement. And I also wrote down One Size Beauty. That is Patrick Starr's brand. It's very new, so I mean, there's still time for him to grow and expand and maybe figure out what his brand needs to be. But I feel like right now it's just kind of a little bit boring. I expected a little bit more. I don't know Patrick Starr super well. I've watched some of his videos in the past, but when I heard he was coming out with a brand, I just had, I don't know, different expectations. I don't know what those expectations are, but more than what happened. And finally, question number 12, who is one celebrity and or influencer you'd love to see come out with their own beauty brand in the future? I wrote down four things because I could not narrow it down to one. As far as beauty influencers go, I would love to see Raw Beauty Christie come out with a brand. I feel like she's very creative. She's very detail oriented. I think she would come out with really beautiful products that are very good quality. She's done a really good job with her collab so far, and I think she would do a great job with a brand of her own. I also wrote down Miley Cyrus. A couple other people said this as well, and I completely agree that was one of the first things to pop into my head as well I just think she's such a cool edgy fun kind of person and I think that could really reflect in a really cool makeup brand it could end up being a Lady Gaga situation where the brand's a little meh compared to who the person is, but in theory, I think she could come out with a really cool brand. Also, similar to Miley Cyrus, I think Haley Williams could come out with a really cool brand. She already does have a hair care line. She has like semi-permanent fun hair colors. I haven't tried them, so I can't speak on them, but I think she could also come out with a really fun brand. She's kind of edgy, out of the box, not vanilla. And I think she could come out with something really, really fun. I think that would be a really cool thing to see. And the fourth one I wrote down, I don't know if it's so much that I want it or that I'm surprised that it doesn't exist, but I wrote down RuPaul <laughs> and I know a few of his queens from RuPaul's Drag Race have come out with their own lines since their seasons on the show and I'm honestly just surprised RuPaul has not come out with a brand of his own. I feel like he has literally so many things under his name. He has like 5 million songs. He's come out with so many different types of merch. I'm surprised that makeup hasn't been a thing yet. I think that could actually be really fun. <laughs> So yeah, those are the 12 questions. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I love a good tag video. I love just sitting down, casual, chatting about makeup and brands with you guys. I would love to hear your answers. Please leave your answers in the comment section or film your own videos, whatever you prefer. I especially wanna hear your answers to question number 12. Who is a celebrity or influencer you'd love to see come out with a brand? I really wanna hear your answers to that because I feel like we could all have really cool different answers. If you made it to the end of this video, please leave me a vegetable emoji. And if you liked it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please hop over to my my Instagram. It's Butte Bean. Follow me there. I post every single day. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm posting most days here as well. Please make sure you're staying informed with everything that's going on in the world. There will be links in my description box that will take you to information and resources and ways in which you can help. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.